As our call takers and dispatchers are well aware, EMS makes up the bulk of our call volume. The most critical EMS call that we handle is sudden cardiac arrest. When we talk about critical trauma, because we've designed a robust system of trauma care, the overall mortality is only about 4%. Patients that are infected and present in septic shock have a mortality of 30 to 50%. But patients with sudden cardiac arrest have a mortality of nearly 90%. This represents the sickest cohort of the largest segment of our work. And I would argue that sudden cardiac arrest is one of the main reasons why our whole infrastructure exists. When we think of the care of cardiac arrest patients, we think about the chain of survival. Every link in the chain is critically important if we're to give the patient the best chance of a good outcome. We started our focus on cardiac arrest by looking at the quality of CPR delivered by our EMTs and paramedics. We have and continue to focus on the quality of resuscitation our personnel perform on scene. We also have to focus on those critical moments before our personnel arrive because any time without CPR is critical to the patient's chance of a good outcome. What is the role of dispatch? The critical role of dispatch is the early recognition of cardiac arrest and the delivery of CPR instructions. We follow the no-no-go philosophy of CPR instructions developed in King County, Washington. If the patient's not conscious and not breathing normally, then we should instruct in hands-only CPR. When we describe this, many people think that we're going to be doing chest compressions on a lot of people that end up not being in cardiac arrest, and that's true. In a well-done study, it was determined that only 55% of patients that met these criteria were actually in cardiac arrest. 45% of the patients were not. The study followed up on the patients that were not in cardiac arrest but did receive chest compressions, and they found that only 2% of those patients suffered any injury related to the chest compressions. Most of those injuries were rib fractures, and none of them were life-threatening. However, the implementation of no-no-go resulted in more than double the rate of bystander CPR. The risk of performing CPR on a patient with a faint pulse is minimal compared to the risk of not performing CPR on a patient that is in cardiac arrest. What are we doing to improve the rate of CPR before 911 is called? LA County Fire participates in sidewalk CPR and other campaigns to improve the rates of bystander CPR. Is there a difference in cardiac arrest outcomes if there's a delay in dispatching an ALS unit? In other words, with all the BLS call types, aren't we worried about missing a cardiac arrest and causing a bad outcome? The answer is no, because all the research says that the most important factors in cardiac arrest survival are witnessed cardiac arrest, bystander CPR, good quality CPR, and early defibrillation. All of those can be delivered by our BLS units. That's not to say that ALS units are not important. They have the most experience and training to run the resuscitation, but the patient is not being deprived any critical intervention because of a delayed response in the ALS unit. In fact, using tier dispatch makes the nearest ALS unit more likely to be available to respond. What else can we do to improve outcomes? Get the units on the road as soon as possible. Dispatch does a terrific job of this. I'm a big fan of calling out the cardiac arrest in the dispatch because I think it helps get the attention of the units. In reviewing dispatch data, half the calls dispatched as cardiac arrest are in fact cardiac arrest. There is a mountain of evidence that response times to many of our EMS call types is not critical to patient outcomes, but cardiac arrest is an exception. Every minute the patient spends without circulation, their chance of a good recovery drops precipitously. In summary, dispatch is a critical link in the chain of survival. Don't be nervous about instructing the caller to perform chest compressions. You're far more likely to hurt a patient by not ordering compressions than if you do.